de Global Latin Factor Podcast. Welcome, welcome you and all to another episode of the Global Latin Factor Podcast where we talk about Latino everything. And today, just like every single episode that we have, we have a very special Latino DJ in the house. He's a DJ, experienced DJ, traveling DJ. With uh, He does event planning from the Dallas, Texas area. 15 years DJ experience with thousands of weddings, quinceañeras, sweet 16s, and many more events under his belt. We have DJ Cream with DJ Cream Eventos. ¿Qué pasó, DJ Cream? ¿Cómo estás ahí? How you doing today? Doing great yourself? I'm doing great, man. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start with a very popular <clears throat> segment that's starting to become something very unique. We call it Preguntas al Chile. For the ones that Preguntas are audio, al Chile. Like, ¿Listo? Listo. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Preguntas al Chile. Tacos o burritos? Burritos. Cerca de más. Corn tortillas o flour tortillas? Flour tortillas. Gorditas o flautas? Gorditas. Mexican coca o jarrito? Carritos. ¿Qué, qué sabor? What flavor? The punch. Punch? Y de pineapple. Pineapple. Yes. Yeah. Agua de horchata, jamaica o tamarindo. Horchata, horchata. Salsa verde, salsa roja. I don't need spicy. You don't need spicy? No. Nothing wrong with that. Menudo o pozole? Menudo. Churros o flan? Flan. I know you don't like drink beer, but if you have to, Corona, Tecate o Dos X? No, no, no. None of them. Okay. Tequila o mezcal? I don't drink no tequila. With margaritas? You know the margaritas yeah. are made with tequila, right? <laughs> well, with mates, yes. Okay, but not so straight. not straight up shots. Yeah. Okay, so it will be tequila. Yeah. Okay, so you don't like, none, not even the salsas, Valentina, Tapatio, or Sa Cholula? Valentina, yes. You like Valentina. Uh, you know, okay. popcorn. Okay, paletas de sandía, elote, o mango? The, las de chile. Oh. The candy ones. Sandía. Sandía? Good. Okay, what about margarita? Would, do you like them with salt or with sugar rim? Sugar. Sugar? Conchas, the brown ones, the white ones, or the pink ones? I don't need bread. You don't need bread? Okay. Refried beans or borracho beans? I don't need beans. You don't need beans. You know, I don't need beans. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what does the word Latino mean to you in general? I don't know. Like Hispanics? Mm hmm Yes, another word for Hispanics. Okay. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Hispanic. All right. So is there, when you were make, making your way over here, uh, did you think maybe like three questions that you wish I would ask you during this time or not? nothing came not to really. mind? Okay. Just... Remind me again of DJ Cream, your name. DJ Cream. Okay. How did it come to be? I think you told me an interesting story about it before. No? How did your name came to be DJ oh, Cream? just because, uh, you know, when I was in high school. Yeah. They were, you know. They would call me crema because I was like white and all my oh. Mexican friends were like brown, like you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they were, they were a little, uh, so you were whiter, like lighter skin. Yeah, lighter. Skin, lighter skin and they call you just crema. And yeah. But. That, well, not, not the guys, the girls. Okay. Yeah, so the girls would call know, you crema. Because if a guy called me crema, it would be <laughs> gay, right? <laughs> and then. Uh, but then I was like cream. And then you just came cream. Yeah. I was like, well, cream sounds good, you know, because there's another DJ in. New Year, mm -hmm. and I, I was listening to a song, and it says, sounds DJ Cream. I was like, well, I'm going to be DJ Cream. Too. So you're going to be DJ Cream but too? But he's with the C, I'm with the K. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, that's true. All right, so how did you start DJing? I know you, you said whenever uh -huh. you got started, how did, it, how did that begin? <clears throat> What, when was my first gig? Or yeah, when, when was your first gig or when did you just decide to start DJing? Man, I, I like music since I was like little, you know. My mm -hmm. mom used to get on me all the time. Cause, yeah. You know, I, I used to have my MP3 players, you know, yeah. all the time on me. And the then, walk, your Walkman? Yeah, the Walkman. With the CD player? With the MP3, yeah. Oh, MP3s. Back, well, you know, the Walkman, the yeah. MP3. And, you know, and I always like music, you know. You know, you know the CD players, they had like little thing where yeah. you put the, you know. You know, back then they had the CD players yeah. and they had like a little click. So I would put a piece of paper in there. Yeah. And then I would I would think that, you know, the CD was like a like a, oh, vinyl, like like a, a vinyl. Yeah, like a and vinyl. Like, so you do you're trying to mix it? Yeah. So you were thinking that that would be a... Because it would give you three seconds, you know. Ah. Because, uh, you know, you can stop the CD three seconds. Yeah. And I would go three seconds and then... That's pretty cool. <clears throat> and then what was your first gig that you started... Then my 
I think my tío had a a birthday party or something like that. And yeah. they, they were like, oh, just come up and play, you know, sa you know, saca todo, like, and I put everything in, like, like literally. I so did you, have, I, did you have speakers already? I had already? Two, two, only two speakers, you know, those big old speakers. Is that the ones with the with this, the vinyl Man, on top, player no, on top? No, those, all, you know, the ones that come with three things. Uh-huh. Like, oh, okay, okay. The all ones, school speakers. All school speakers. I'm talking so about, like, that. 2007. Yeah. And then, you know, I was just playing music there, and then I guess one guy sold me. And he asked me to go DJ, and that was my first gig in Halton City. So you didn't have no equipment at all. You just had your just stereo. Just speakers and the CD, you know. Your CDs. CD players back then, because uh -huh. we didn't have no controller. CD players, and that was it. But you didn't have any of the other equipment. You just played it off your off your radio, or how did no, you man. do it? Con CD players. With after CD players. No, I had CD players. Yeah. And you played it off the CD players, yeah, and that's the it. CDs, you know, that was all school. But, but it's not, it wasn't DJ equipment, right? It was DJ equipment. It's called it CD was. players. Okay, that's what it's called. Yeah. And then you just played the CDs, one after the other. Yes. And, and how did you feel to do your first gig? When, so how did you feel whenever the guy told you, come play for me? Well, I was excited, you know, because... How old were you? Like 17. You were 17 years old. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, you're like, so what happened there? So you're like, you think I could do this for forever or? No, I was just doing it as a hobby, you know. Uh huh. Because then I wanted to do it. You know, yeah, you know. Well, that was my, I guess that was my goal back then, you know, be a DJ for clubs. Because, you know, I never thought about quinceañeros or weddings or none of that. Yeah. Know? And then, I don't know, I guess I just started, you know, I started with one. And then I guess it took like one one year for me to get another book. So, you know. So then, you know, I used to get one gig every year. Well, the first year I only got one, and then the second one I got like two, and then three, four, five, uh -huh. ten. And then, and then, you know, when I realized I was getting maybe like 40, 50, you know, now I'm getting like 70 more, you know. Okay, so, so, so the first, let's say about the first five years, it was it was not a lot of work. For nah. You. And not I was not the, doing quinceañeras. And not even the clubs either. No, nah, no. Nah. So just family members here and there? No, no, just regular customers, you know, like people I didn't even know. Because, you know, back then we didn't have no Facebook, we didn't have no social yeah, media. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it was just, I guess, if they go to a party, they will ask for a business card, my number. And then from there, you know, people start knowing me, I guess. Okay. And then from then you just start growing and growing and growing. Yeah, yeah. So now you're up to the point where, because that's what I wanted to get across now that you're, you do this full time. Yeah. You don't have a regular one, like nine to five or a regular job. This mm -hmm. is all you dedicate yourself to. And you're doing, how many is the max that you do maybe a year events now? Like whether it's quince's weddings and different things like that. I think the most, like this year I got like 70. 70 already. Yes. And that's including the ones you already did yes, and the ones for the whole year. For the yes. whole year. Yes. 70. And yes. that's the most you've gotten so far? Uh, 75. 75. You know, that's 65, good. 65, yeah. Yeah, that's really good. To to start with one a year to maybe after that, the word starts spreading and that shows where you work. And then they just wanted to keep hiring you. Mm. But what I like about you is that not only that, but you took some of that money and instead of spending it or buying different things that you kept investing on your equipment, right? Yeah. Because I remember you were telling me a story of a, a picture you posted and some of the DJs that were more established that will make fun of you for what you had, right? Yeah. And how did that make you feel? No, it don't make me feel bad. I was just like, you know, well, I guess, you know, they're being there longer than me or, mm -hmm. you know, Oh, they have I don't know you know I never I was I never I was never negative you know I was just like well I guess I'm gonna do better one day you know so I always keep myself positive you know because it could be discouraging right with somebody yeah, that's already yeah. been doing especially somebody that works the, the same thing you do right yes and instead of pushing you forward I'm pretty sure it was like raza like Latinos yeah instead of uh like hey great job keep doing it because every time i seen you do a post or anything you're always like encouraging all the other DJs like hey keep doing it but it's sad that instead of doing that with the equipment you have, hey, echale ganas, keep keep going forward. They would like make fun of you, and I would like what? That would be kind of discouraging. So what kept you from going? Like you just keep thinking I'm gonna do better. Yeah, because it was like two, three people discouraged me, and then there was ten, to, ten or more people, you know, telling me I was doing good. So you know, I got. So more. you focus on the ones that yeah, tell you was doing and, good. And saying you know, in comments, you know, everything. I mean, I always try to keep the positive or the negative, you know, the 
maybe some somebody tell me, hey, uh, you don't know how to mix. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, instead of me getting mad, I, I would go home and, st you practice. Know, and practice, you know. So uh, you took it more uh, constructive criticism yes. than ever, like, instead of taking it the negative, you don't know what yeah. you're doing, or instead yeah, of, like, yeah. yeah, you know what you're talking about. But maybe about. they were right, you know. Yeah. Maybe, you know, but, you know, people are, you know, people, we, we live in a mean world, you know. It's in social media, in social media, we do, because... A lot of people in your face, they would never tell it to you unless they were intoxicated. Yeah. But in the real world, they wouldn't come to you and say, oh, you suck. You can't mix unless they were drunk. But in social media, like with your phone, it's easy to make a, a mean comment because you might not ever see them or they might be on the other side of the state. And it's easy to do that. So it is a mean world, but not in the real world. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And they will do that. So I've seen an interview of yours. This on uh, YouTube, that you, your favorite artist is Bad Bunny. Is that no. true? <laughs> I was just nervous to say Bad Bunny. Why? I don't know. And, you know, it was the first time it came out. It was the first guy that came out to my mind. What is your favorite type of, of your artist or your favorite type of music? No, I don't, uh, 80s music. You like 80s the music? 80s, old school music, like 70s. rock and stuff like that? No, pop. Pop. Yeah. You like stuff like that. But any particular artist that you listen to more? No, just 80 music. That's English or Spanish? English in and and English in Spanish. More English. In Spanish. More English. Yeah. That's cool. Okay, so now that you have all this, what is the next goal for you? As far as like, do you just want to maintain doing the same thing that you've been doing, or or scaling and having like a crew of DJs and different things like that, or what is your goal? Yeah, well, I already have a crew of DJs. You know, I have like three DJs. So mm -hmm. I guess my goal is me just you know hiring DJs. My bad. <laughs> uh, and, you know, just, you know, just getting paid. Nah, you know. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. So just, in, keep increasing it. Because yeah. I know that you do have a, a mindset mentality for building the business and having a professional look. Because a lot of the times when you see your pictures, you look professional. And I think that's important for you, right? Yeah. Why, why is it important for, to, to have that and then you know, to, to have the look? It is look uh, bandit look insane, yeah. So you, it is what you show. You sell what yeah. you're showing. Yeah. So whenever they see you, you in your head, you'd be like, they see a professional. They they, when you think professional, you think like you don't have to question if they know what they're doing. You already know you know they know what they're doing. All right. Right. Yeah, That's right. what's up. Because I don't think you like me going to your wedding wearing a hat and shorts, right? Yeah. That's true. You know, or jeans or, or just you know, a polo. You have to Nothing dress. wrong with it, but it gives it a different look. Yeah, I mean, you know, you have to do it. If you're going to do something, do it good. You know, do it right. Yeah. Okay, so on the website, you have that uh, a lot of people have different talents, but you used to make uh, memorable events. What is the most memorable event so far that you had? Do you remember? The one, one of the events that stands out would be like, oh, yeah, like, I remember this one. Or a moment... Of something that happened, you'd be like, "Oh wow, this is nice. This is like one of those moments that, are like, I don't know, just when they do the father and daughter, then sometimes I feel like, like when I cry, even though if I, I don't know them. That's true because it got it gets very <laughs> it gets emotional. Me right <laughs> no, that is true. Even the um, <laughs> the bride and the and the dad dance, those are very emotional too. The yeah. The quinceañera and the dad too. That and then especially. Well, back then I didn't have a daughter. Now I have uh -huh. a daughter. You know, so it's even more. Yeah, I know, even more. Because it is, it gets very emotional. I don't know why. You know, sometimes be like, not all of them are ton. You know. Yeah. No, because know. even even the dad, as tough as Mexicanos as they look, but uh, then you see them when they're dancing with their their daughter, and all of a sudden they just start kind of like breaking down too. It's like it's nice. Yeah. It's like super super emotional. You be like. You'd be surprised how emotion it can get whenever, like, even the weddings, how people will be, like, start crying or different things like that. And you can feel it because everybody around is like, ah, and then it's awesome that you can create moments like that. So that's cool. Why is it important for you to be fun or have fun? Because some of that on the website you highlight that it, it has to be fun. Why do you think it's important that it has to be? Why I have to be fun or why the bank has to why be fun? Why the whole event has to be fun or Well, big? you know, because that's what I'm getting paid, you know, to make the event fun, memorable, you know, you know, get everybody to the dance floor, you know. that's I guess that's my thing, you know. When I see every, if, you know, dance floor full, that's when I feel like I'm doing a good good job, you know. Cause yeah, yeah. Have you, uh, what is the most, uh, okay, so whenever you're doing gigs, I know that's a lot of times. Like the guests sometimes could be a little strange. So what do they? What do the guests get wrong the most whenever you're working? That 
like for whatever reason they feel like they should be coming to you or or telling you how to play or things like that whenever somebody else is supposed to hire you like the dad or the quinceañera hired to do the event what do, what do the guests get it wrong all the time whenever they're just guests is there anything that you feel like like if you're a guest and you go to a party you should be enjoying the music but then a lot of them get demanding right yeah like you know that guy that wanted to uh -huh. sing like, yeah why would you want to sing when there's a full you know there's a full dance floor yeah don't do that so i think uh I think they get it wrong in the sense that it's a party and the parents or the or the or the bride or the spouse paid for the, the event and they want their type of music played and a lot of the times it's not about necessarily the guests they're entertained but the person that put the event together they have a mind of how they want the night to go you know right. and that's the reason why they hire you to play that music mm -hmm. and even though you're a guest and you're treated good They they can't forget that they're still just a guest on a party, and then the the most important person is whoever is the one that hired the the, the, one the bride, pay. the bride, the ones that pay the bride and the quinceañera at that time. Yeah. So yeah, you worked with artists before, right? Yeah. How, what was the name of the artist that you worked with? Uh, you open up or you? Letin, la, what is that called? Lenny Tavares, mm -hmm. uh, Nicky John, mm -hmm. Sech, Sech. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lalo Mora, yeah, who else? Conjunto Rio Grande, yeah. Uh, so. Those are some of the artists that you open up for, yeah, yeah. And how did that come to be? Oh, uh, like, well, I guess you know, it's just a different crowd, you know, cause, you know, going from 700 people, you know, 200 people, the like quinceanera to a thousand, or you know, some of those people, it feels, I feel good, you know. It feels different. Yeah, it feels different. Like, yeah, way different. And how did they come to be? How did you became to work with them? Is it different DJs that they see you? Yeah, different a... DJs, mm -hmm. and you know, they I work with them, and then you know, just, it's all about connections, you know, connecting. Mm -hmm. And which was the biggest one that you did so far? Like as far as in an artist, like how many people, thousands of people was there? Uh, I think that was the. The. Nikki Chan won. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. many people do you think it was? Fuck, man, I don't know, like 5,000 more people. 5,000 or more people? <laughs> yeah. Dang, that's a lot of people. That's more than a quinceañera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, like, for DJs, I feel like sometimes you get hired, you do your event, and then that's it, right? You get paid. But I think you take it a step further, and it shows a lot on the people that go back to you and hire you for, let's say you did a quinceañera for, and then... Five years later, their daughter, they, the dads hire you for their quinceañera, for their, their sister. Or their whatever, weddings. Too. Or their weddings. I feel old now. So why do you feel it's important not only to do the service, but go beyond that? Why? Where does that come from? I don't know. I was, I was you know, I got it from my mom, you know. She always used to say, if you're going to do something, do it right, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. do, make sure you do everything right. And people, yeah. you know, customers are going to be happy with you and they're going to recommend you to somebody else you know so that's my goal you know make the customer happy and get more you know more jobs from there because i know if I, you know if you're a customer and you know you come to me and i do your wedding or quinceanera and everything goes the way that you wanted it to you know you're gonna tell other people about me right yeah absolutely. then you know i'm gonna get more business it's about business you know growing you know yeah yeah that is true because one thing is just to do it And, yeah, because I can just go and play and, you know, and that's get it. Out. And go. But no. I mean, yeah. I would not be here, you know. It'd be just maybe working still at McDonald's. I don't know. <laughs> and you did used to work at McDonald's. So yeah. One of your first jobs, right? Yeah. yeah. No, that's cool. And you were doing good, right? You were moving up the ladder. At and, McDonald's? Yeah. No, nah, man. No, you just regular job? You yeah, didn't, I, didn't, you didn't I, don't have like, I don't like to work, yeah. You know? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. We're going to play a game before we move on to the next one. It's called... It's a new segment. It's called Guest. This Guest is Global Latin Factor. It's food. So I'm going to give you seven clues. And you got seven clues. And you're going to guess what this is. All right? All right. Made from corn. First clue. It's said to be around eight to 10,000 years. Tortilla? Mi uh, almost. Minero used to use it to carry food. It's a thing on Tuesdays, like a hashtag on Tuesdays. 
Taco? Yeah. Good job. Salud. ¿Cuál fue la primera? What was the first one? The first one was made Masa. out of corn. Masa? Made out of corn. Tacos. The first one. Yeah, made made from made from corn. Tortilla is made of corn. Tacos is made of. But I could have gone with tortilla, but I wanted it to be tacos specifically. That's why I gave you the other clues. Mm -hmm. And tacos mm -hmm. been around for that many years. Yeah, but since tortilla, you know. Well, it it could have been tortilla. Yeah, but you say made out of corn. But it, but tacos is made out of corn. No, but you I see what you're saying. Yeah, but you guessed it right. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even have to go all all seven clues. Okay, so what is the uh, as far as preparation for an event? What is the you you get together? Uh, do you talk to the the people from the event beforehand? Yeah. Uh, do you have in mind what you're gonna be even the playlist or things like that? Yeah, I do a, a timeline and playlist. Okay, so. How much preparation does it go into for you in to go into the event? Or sometimes you already know what you're going to do. Yeah, I already know, you know. But I've been doing it for so long. You know, so. Sometimes I don't even look at the time. I just go. Whatever happens, happens. <laughs> you think that's okay? <laughs> I mean. I mean, you get you make it happen. But you think preparation is key, right? So you yeah, have I mean, to. You know. But you do have 15 years experience. So it does help. Yeah. Okay. So. Whenever you mix, you do you do strive in doing both, right? Bilingual and English. So you yeah. you do both, yeah. right? So, what made you like? Do you like prefer to do in English or in Spanish better, or does it matter to you? Well, I like more like you know I don't like regional Mexicano music, mm -hmm. so I guess English. You like the English more, but then regional Mexicano that's what I play more, you know. Yeah. So I had to play. You do have to play. You do have to play it. Yeah. Okay. So there's uh for a DJ that is not full time yet, um, but they've been uh, asking you how to get to that level because I, I I feel like some some DJs still look up to you. Uh, they're around. They're coming up. They see you doing, and uh, they see the equipment that you have, and they see like, well, he does it all the time. But it took a lot of time and yeah. investing back on that. So for them, what would be like for you? What was your formula to not only make money, but like put more money back in and just keep growing. What would be your advice for them? Invest. Invest. Uh, you know, do it, I guess. What is, uh, you know, you just, if you like, like I always tell DJ, if you like music mm -hmm. and you like, if you're doing it because you like the music, you're going to go and grow. But if you just want to do it because, you know, you think it's cool and, you know, you want to make money, you're not going to go nowhere because, you know, it's not into you. This is this is the way I see it, you know. It's like everything else. I cannot go. I'm not going to go do a mechanic because I don't like mechanic. I don't like to get there, you know. So if I'm going to go and do it just because I want to, you know, give money just from being a mechanic, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to go nowhere, you know. Right. I guess that's what I'm... Because I love music, you know, and I don't see it as a job. I see it like, you know... Uh, you know, because I go there and like, uh, you know, I do it because I love to do, you know, music, I love lighting, sounds, you know. And I guess that was, that was the key, you know. Because, you, you know, I, I got a choice. I, I, back then I had a choice, you know. Or oh, either I go to work, you know, La Yardas or construction, something that I didn't like. Or, I, I, you know, I do what I had to do with music and keep growing. And that's what I did. You know? I okay. quit my job and, you know, I did full time. So and when I quit my job, I was not even... Making yeah, a lot of money, you know, at a quinceañera. Mm -hmm. how, how many years did it take for you to stop and doing a regular job and do a full-time DJ? Maybe like six years. Six, six years? Yeah, because I've been doing a full-time DJ nine years already. Nine years. And you were doing other jobs, but that wasn't your thing. It no. was like, I need to focus on I was this. doing, like I said, I was just doing the job because I need the money. Yes. You know, it's because not like, it wasn't paying you that well. No, and I didn't like it, you know. Yeah, you didn't like it. Yeah. I feel you on that. I'm, I'm, I am wouldn't cut my own yard. <laughs> I, I'll pay somebody to cut my yard. I'm that type of Mexicano. But you're providing a job for somebody else that wants to do it, right? So yeah. I think the difference between that, not only having the passion for the music, right? Because you do love it. It's something that you, it's important. It has to be. But the other thing that I see different from you than anybody else is that you treat it like a business, 
you know yeah and not only treat it like a business but you focus on the presentation the logo and you're constantly promoting and making sure that you capture the pictures so people can see that you're you know you have a satisfied customer right and i like there's another dj i think we ran into him at a gig that he has that photo thing he does a video review like at the end of the gig, he, he talks to the, the bride and the groom or whatever it is. And then just give them like a couple of seconds out what you thought about the event. What did we do right? And he puts it on a video and puts it on social media. And I like it. I like it a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that that's pretty cool. Uh, your website. This is something that you you do yourself on yeah. the website. How did you learn that? Uh, I didn't learn it. I was just sometimes someday somebody asked me for a website and I didn't have one. Yeah. So uh, you know, I just went to YouTube and and start watching videos and uh, that's what I did. Yeah. The uh, it's good. It's really good, and I think it's it's part of the the package of the presentation because if you're gonna be a DJ or any kind of business, you have to have a website at yeah. least presentable. I know. Right? People will take you serious. Yeah, that's, you do that's that. the reason I, you know, I created too, you know, because I'm a DJ, but, you know, I don't know, it's just like, you know. Yeah, it's important to do so. Okay, so you like gig, you like uh, gadgets, right? You like to find, like, new lights and stuff. Like, is that because you're always looking into what's next, what's new? Yeah, I had to, you know, I had to keep updating. That's, I think that's the key, you know, I, I, I update my equipment every year, every year. Every year? Yeah, man. Every year you update your equipment. Yes. Man, that's a lot. And you also do the robots. And then you're recently upgrading, right, as well? Yes. Okay, where where did the idea of the robots come to be? Where did you see it? Did you thought it was going to be cool? <laughs> that was like seven years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, it came from Monterrey. So you, was, you saw it over there, you saw it here? Uh, we saw it there. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we were the first one here and forward to, to have the robot. You were? Yeah. You were the first one. Here in forward, and then another DJ in Dallas had it, too. So it was only two robots back then. Back then. Yeah. And now everybody has robots. Everybody robot. has robots. Everybody. And everybody was the first one. Everybody was the first ones. But to make mm-hmm. it clear, like, there's evidence of people and that know around that you know that you were the one yeah, of the first ones. I was the first one, yeah. The very first one. Yes. Okay. Right. And uh, so you have a, up, a new robot you're going to be upgrading soon, right? Mm-hmm. When is that expecting to roll out? Uh, maybe like in three months. In three months? And is it going to be a bigger robot? Is it going to be like a transformer, like by itself moving no, around? No, it's just like a robot, you know. Honestly, I'm just doing it because, you know, uh, I guess people like it. I don't know. I think the show that you do, because you do a particular show, right, during the robot, the robot dance and then do most of the line dances, then the mixes that you add in. It, it gives it a good and, and a good time for the kids, not only the adults, but the kids as well. The younger kids can join in because all the other older ones wants to dance, the ones that don't know Tenas or whatever. But whenever the kids get to dance the, and then they have the robot, it kind of draws attention. Yeah, I mean, you know, cool. cause that's, you know, I was the first one to do that too. Cause back, you know, when the robots, you know, they would just place anything. So you started doing the line dancing with the yeah, stuff too? Yeah, because that was the point, you know, if you're going to do, you know, I'm going to do line dancing, I do it another way, you know, different way. That's good. Yeah. So you were the first one. Yeah. As well. I'm just saying, I, like, <laughs> whenever somebody watches this and they say, like, you weren't, I, I, I believe that you are, you were the first I one. I have evidence, you know. I you have to... videos and everything. Mm-hmm. Whatever happened to your YouTube channel? You used to upload a bunch of videos. You have a lot of videos on your channel. Yeah, but then it came TikTok, Instagram. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think nobody watched. Well, uh, people watch. People YouTube, watched it. But it's, you know, like, in older people, it's more easy to go to Facebook or, you know, Instagram. Yeah. Well, millennials, Instagram. You know, you want to get the mom, the quinceanera, Facebook. Yeah, Facebook. And that's what I keep updating, you know. Because, yeah. you know, YouTube, I mean, who, who got YouTube? I mean. It's not like a social media thing, you know. It's not a social media thing, but it's a it's an entertaining thing to yeah, but you know. people don't want to like you go to Facebook to learn about stuff, right? Or, I mean, uh, not to to YouTube to learn about things, right? Yes, but you know, if I'm, sometimes I'm in YouTube, Instagram, and I see a post, you know, or anything like a speaker, mm. you know, and that's when I go to YouTube and look it up. Yeah, but in this case, you know, if you're looking for a DJ, you're not gonna go to YouTube, right? You're gonna no, go to Facebook no. or Instagram. Yeah. 
Facebook yeah. or Instagram. Yeah, you know, and that's what I focus more on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, because you do use uh, a lot of the posts and videos and uh, the reels. You need to do the reels. That one's really good. It's been picking up for the past few, I guess you could say years, the little reel. Instead of a regular video, the reels, and they stay there. And it makes like a play. And it automatically, like, if you play one video, of you, they play one video of yours, the next one, if you have them, they all start coming up for mm. people to watch them all. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. So, I saw one. Yeah. Well, I think I did one in accident. And I was like, what the hell is a reel? Well, a reel. It's, it's a new thing that, that Instagram's been focusing on, the reels. Mm. It's kind of like. Like TikTok, right? It's kind of like the TikTok, but it's the reels, they call it. Yeah. And then, if again, if you play one, it, it all the other ones show I up. I don't watch. You don't watch what? Those TikToks. Do you watch TikToks? But it's the, you haven't gotten book from TikTok, right? Most of it comes from Facebook or referrals or Instagram. Instagram, Instagram. You get a lot of Instagram. Yeah. Really, that's good. But you've been growing it for how many Instagrams you have? I got three. You have three Instagrams. I think I have two. Of them. Uh, two for babies and one for babies. And one for the babies. Yeah. That's what's up. So I have <laughs> DJ Cream two one four is one, right? No, DJ Cream Texas. DJ and Texas. then DJ Cream. Uh, eventos Event oh yeah event eventos and then you have your personal one yeah ah that's cool all right so now that you're uh how many uh as far as like the uh are you planning to do clubs at all whatever because you did it right i how do did that clubs sometimes sometimes when i'm free you know? but it's not something nah, that not my thing no more why is that no money there no money in the clubs for you for me yeah yeah I think it's the same thing for across the board. It's gotten better, but I don't think it's going to get much better unless you're, like, established. You know, it's cool, you know. I know people, you know, I know DJs, they're doing good, you know. Yeah. But, you know, most of them, they just, you know, oh, the DJ at the club, but that's it. That, but that's what they like. Yeah. And that's cool. You know, I don't like, I don't like, I don't like that, you know. I like to make money. That's what I like to do. Okay. What is your favorite type of event? Is it the King says, the Sweet Sixteen, or the weddings? Weddings. You do? Why? I used to do more quinceañera, now I'm doing more weddings, because they're easier, you know. They're easier? Yeah, you know, because quinceañera, you have a shit lot of padrinos, and... Yeah. It can get complicated. Yeah. People don't understand, like, a quinceañera can get very complicated very fast, because if they have all the chambelanes... And then you have, if they have damas, then you have to list all the damas. And then if they have all the sponsors, yeah. padrinos, for lie, I mean, for, um, you name it, for hat, for jewelry, all that. So it can go for an hour, an hour, right? An hour for just that. All righty. Okay, DJ Cream, well, I think we pretty much wrapped everything. Anything else that you have that, that people need to be on the lookout for? For no. you, all right. We appreciate you stopping by. Tell me all the social media. Where can they get you at? All the Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. Let me get my phone. And then also the website. My website DJ www eventos eventos DJ Cream Eventos mm -hmm. That's where you can find and it. Then my Instagram DJ Cream Events Texas. I mean TX. Mm -hmm. That's one. And then the other one is DJ Green Texas. DJ Green Texas. And any of those, they can get at you and, and book. And do you have a number you like to give or not necessarily? 817-240-7670. One more time. 817-240-7670. Okay. Well, again, DJ Cream, I think you came a long way from, like, starting off just DJing for your deal. I know. To, <laughs> to booking a gig a year. To growing to where you can do it now full time, uh, it's is like commandable. What commandable means is like it's just something that somebody can inspire to look and see and be like, wow, I can do this. I can be inspired to do this uh, from not being your full time job to doing part time jobs to not knowing that that's not what you wanted to do to focus on just love the music and then working on it. And you came a long way. So I'm very proud of you Thank for you. your accomplishment, everything you've done. You are a global Latin factor, and I wish you the best of luck of all the events that you have. And one other thing, if people, anybody was to look um, for you on a search engine like a Google or something like that years from now, what do you wish them for them to find about you? Uh, I don't know. That I was... <laughs> uh. 
I don't know, that I make a lot of people happy back then. Quinceañera, you know. That was a DJ. Like, you know, that's what I think, you know. When when I grow up, my dad, my kid's going to be like, oh, you were a DJ. Because, you know, they, they have videos, you know. Yeah. And, and I, I, you know, this is the thing. You know, because we are, you know, everybody's here normal people, right? Like you, me, you know, everybody. But then I think this is the way I see it. I'm not trying to feel, you know, I'm not trying to be, be better than nobody else, you know. But, you know, I know one day people's going to, they're going to remember me, you know, because let's say a quinceañera is going to watch their, you know, their quinceañera video in 20 years. And they, if I did a good job, they're going to be like, man, that DJ was good. So in 20 years, somebody is going to, you know, at least talk about me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, and so, you know, you know, I, like, like I say, you know, there's people, they, they just live, die, and that's it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, at least we, somebody, they're going to remember me, you know. And that's the the thing that you put in the thing that you create a a, mem- a memorable event yes, that they will know. remember you, and it has happened and help you continue to get booked because, like you said, sometimes you do the quinceañeras and years from then six seven years later. I did the two years for some girls and then the quinceañeras and then the weddings. And then the weddings. Yeah, I feel all you done that. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. But but again, it shows in your work, right? And then it shows that you they remember all that. They remember yeah. those things that you're part of their story growing up now up to their wedding and if you continue to do this i don't know how long you plan to do the dj but if you continue to they have kids then they'll start with their two and then their quince and then and hopefully that. you're not so yeah, old. Right. <laughs> i mean maybe, maybe they marry young and then you can still do their wedding right, for their yeah, kids too many kids now that's but it. but it's good though because you are creating those memories that they want to come back to you yeah. and then all the way up to the wedding from two years old to the quince to the wedding that's like big for some people those are the bigger for especially for a a woman those are the biggest things in their life right it's It's only three you know when you're born Uh uh-huh when you graduate from school and then when you're wedding yeah and then the other thing that you do too is that uh we didn't talk about a lot is uh not you don't do just that but you also do reveals like uh baby Mm -hmm. like gender reveals And uh, you also do the CO2 guns and the coal sparklers, right? Yeah, for puzzle, CO2, I mean, gender reveal, you know. I do a lot of things. For, yeah. So not only do you do the DJ in part, but the, the business itself can expand and you have done it to where you can do the reveals. You can do uh, all kinds of different things that I've seen you do. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then not only that, now you're going to do their, their DJ at the reveal, and the the whatever you do, and then the two years old, and then now that you're going to their quince, so you since they're born, you're going to be doing the entire events up to their wedding. Yeah, I know, man. That's crazy, right? And that's when you do a good job, like I said. Yeah. You know, they're gonna be they're gonna keep your mind, you know. They do, and I again I salute you. Salute, señor. All right, this was another episode of the Global Latin Factor Podcast. Remember, we are just like you. We are the spice in this melting pot. It is the world. Until next time.